Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Does Judge Torres truly understand what is at stake when it comes to the outcome of the SEC v. Ripple case? And I seriously would love to hear all of your perspectives in the comment section below because it's certainly up for uh, uh, up for conversation. But I, I sure as hell hope that she understands uh, the degree to, to which it would be certainly impactful as it pertains to the XRP community and XRP holders and that answer's probably yes, uh-huh. I think that one's kind of obvious. But does she understand the degree to which her decision is going to impact, perhaps irretrievably, for better or worse, the future of crypto in the United States? It is not too much to state that. I understand that there are courts that can go above there and be appeals and things get overturned. But it doesn't mean that's going to happen. Does she understand that? Because, you know... <laughs> That should be, she should be aware of that. And look, you could sit there and say, and this would be fair. You should be like, okay, well, everybody, every judge should treat every, you know, every case that, that's brought before them with that level of care. But to be honest with you, every single judge is a human. And I think that given that they're humans, if they understand that a particular case is of global importance, which ultimately this would ripple out to global importance in terms of where entre entrepreneurs end up, you know, working in crypto and blockchain. I think if a human who is a judge understands that, that it's that much more consequential, they, because they're human, probably going to take extra time, be extra diligent in coming to that conclusion. So I know we wish that it would be the same amount of care for every single case, but we're talking about humans here. So the question is, does she know that? Well, that's a question posed by attorney John Deaton. Um, and then also, oh, I wanted to highlight this too. Uh, Attorney John Deaton attempted to contact a sitting United States senator, and this particular senator would not talk to him, despite the fact that he's engaging in a highly consequential case having to do with the SEC, obviously, you know, talking about the SEC v. Ripple case here. And wait till you hear what he was told by his staff, because by, by, uh, by the uh, senator's staff, because it's absolutely grotesque. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics. But just as a hobby and just for fun. And by the way, I did want to briefly mention this. This is a topic I, I touched on yesterday, so I want to be super brief. But it's worth knowing. Um, especially in the context of what the hell is going on with the SEC v. Ripple case. Uh, there's this headline from the Crypto Basic. Are, here are it, uh, insiders who will know uh, Ripple versus SEC final ruling before anyone else. And you know, there's, there's been talk from time to time. Okay, but, but the insiders must know. Are there insiders? Well, in a technical sense, yes. Although I have a, a suspicion that when people are talking about insiders, it's more like uh, you know a decision getting blabbed and, and you know going beyond the court to... Uh, those who are not, you know, part of the judicial system, perhaps, maybe other parts of the government, things leaking out. Um, now, I don't believe in, in anything like that happening here because there's no evidence for it. I don't think that's something that would typically happen, though. Obviously, it can. We saw with Roe v. Wade, you know, that whole decision leaked, uh, you know, of course, that's on the Supreme Court level, but that that leaked uh, last summer or leading up to last summer, whatever, whatever the timeline was. So stuff like that. I'm not saying like th th there can't be leaks, but even then, that particular leak came from within, and that's that's kind of the point that I wanted to make here. It's 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 not it's not what a lot of people are are presuming here. And so there's this tweet from Attorney John Deaton. He said, "I see comments about insiders and whether Ripple and and the SEC will learn beforehand and not learn the outcome. The only people." who will know before the judge publicly issues her ruling is her staff and any clerks who helped her with research or helped write the decision. So that'd be, again, it's the true insiders because there are multiple people working on this and it's the judge's ultimate decision. But uh, beyond that, I mean, the, if look, if there's a leak, it's them and then it may just get out into the wild. But in terms of, you know, giving tips to like other government agencies, this or that, I just, I don't buy into that stuff. You'd have to show me evidence for something like that. Um, but in terms of does she get the, the the severity of the situation and just how serious everything is? Because crypto is absolutely, truly under attack in the United States here. Uh, it just And it's crazy to think because I've been in the space more than five years now. It's under way worse attack, way more intense attack than in 2017 when I jumped in, 
which is crazy. I, I, you know, back then, if you asked me, well, would it be less of an attack on crypto another five years out or more? I would have just hazard, uh, hazarded a guess, and I would have said, I think probably less. Why wouldn't it be as it continues to get more adopted? And it's so clear that the genie's out of the bottle, ain't going back in the bottle. Why wouldn't it go in that direction? Well, welcome to the current administration, everybody. Here's a tweet from Attorney Deaton, though. He said, I'm confident Judge Torres is aware of the public interest at stake in the Ripple slash XRP case. Never before did 75,000 holders and users knock on her court door asking to be let in. Yeah, so let's pause and note, 100% agree on that. I, I, I think it's unquestionably the case. I don't think you could debate the other side with a straight face. Judge Torres is aware of the interest specifically surrounding this case. She's aware of the large number of participants in the XRP community, you know, in, in terms of speculators and developers, entrepreneurs, all that jazz. I think she gets all of that. I mean... It's unprecedented. You know, over 75,000 XRP holders asking to be part of this case. That has never happened in history. This is a first. This is highly unusual. Yes, that caught her attention, okay? <laughs> that's, why, that's why I said I don't think you can argue the other side of that with a straight face. But then there's the next part of the question. And John Deaton wrote, But I do wonder, does she truly realize what her decision could mean for America and innovation? See, now there you go, and that's a deeper question, and I hope that she does get that. And it goes back to my comments at the outset of the video. Yes, any judge should treat every single case brought before them as though it's a life or death situation. They should, like, it's, it's of the most paramount importance. But judges are humans, and I think that if it's made clear the degree to which their actions are going to be deeply scrutinized and highly impactful, I think that any judge, or many judges anyway, would just be that much bit more diligent which in our case, I think it will highly favors our position because the facts and the law are certainly on our side. So does she understand this? Um, I'm, I, so look, I'm first, I'm first of all, way more confident in stating that she's aware of you know, the interest in the case, including the XRP community and how you know, we'll all be impacted. Uh, but I, I, I'm not quite as confident in the next part, but I am still highly confident that she does understand because she, she seems to be very interested in this entire ecosystem going out of her way to achieve, acquire information. Um, there's also been all sorts of stuff filed. Like, think about the, the recent supplemental authorities that Ripple uh, filed. They filed two within the last, you know, whatever's, you know, five, six weeks, whatever it's been. And that, you know, having to do with case authority, recent case authority from other courts. So, you know, I think that she's aware of what's happening out here. I don't, I don't think that she's just living in this little bubble. Because I don't think she's stupid, and I think she's a curious person who wants to understand all this stuff. Now, she better, and I do want her to understand the degree to which what she does is going to highly impact people, certainly within the United States most directly, but also indirectly other parts of the world. Because if she gets this wrong and innovation goes outside of the United States, that could be good for other parts of the world, actually. Is that what we want, though? Does that, is that what makes sense? Is, would that even be in line with what should be expected based on Legal precedent having to do with securities? Oh, no, I certainly don't think that's the case. So um, Attorney Deaton asked, and I want to share with you just a few responses from the community. Uh, here is one to John Deaton written by Blockchain Trucker. And he said, she knows that XRP is not a security. It's everything else she's trying to figure out. Which she may send to trial, but I believe XRP will get the clarity it deserves. Now, I agree with that 100%. I think, I think Blockchain Trucker is, is spot on there. Um, how could you, because how could she possibly think the asset itself is a security? There's nothing in case law, there's nothing's ever happened in history that would indicate XRP itself is a security, even though that's what the SEC is pushing for. I don't know how she could be tricked into, she'd have to be stupid. She'd have to be adult. I don't think she is. I don't think she's going to fall for that. So I agree with him there. It's everything else she's trying to figure out, all the specifics. Were there transactions that would count as investment contracts? Is she going to cite anything specifically, even though the SEC didn't cite specific transactions to be called out? They just said, here's the whole ball of wax. It's all a violation. Well, she's got she to gotta wade through all that muck. So I agree. That, that's, that all makes a ton of sense. Um, and it's true that I, I agree that some of this actually really could end up going to trial. And I still kind of hope not, but it's... It's a, there's a very real chance that that's what we're going to see. But even if that's the case, you know what we might get up front before the rest of the stuff goes to trial? The judge could absolutely uh, declare that secondary market transactions of XRP, not, by, not in any sort of violation, has nothing to do with the rest of this. That would be incredible for us. 
that would be absolutely incredible for us here in the XRP community as holders. And then the rest of it, it still, you know, still could be a jury trial. Um, and then I asked the same question. I retweeted John Deaton. It was basically asking the same question. as just kind of like, hey, community, what do you think? So I was curious to get additional perspective. And here's a response uh, to me from XRP community member Pompous Maxi. He wrote, I imagine that the nature of this case would drive her to research beyond court documents as if those weren't enough. Yeah, and I think that's certainly the case as I was kind of getting at just a minute ago. Um, she understands the serious nature of this. I would hazard a guess that she's kind of getting a feel for the landscape at this pace, at, the, at this point. So no way to know for sure, but yeah, I, I think the pompous maxi's on the mark there. Uh, here's a tweet from XRP community member Brian Monarch. He wrote, sure seems like it. If she doesn't, she's done the best job possible at fooling us. Uh, that's for damn sure. <laughs> because everything that I'm seeing from her leads me to believe that she's a person that wants as much information as possible. She's taking this very, very, very super, super seriously. And if you're doing that and you're coming in as a blank slate and you don't have a dog in this fight, I think that just about any human with half a brain at least would come to the conclusion that the SEC's in the wrong here. But, um, but, but part of that process would be seeing what else is happening in crypto, getting a feel for the entire landscape. Then there was also this from an XRP community member named Jeremy who wrote to me and said, given her actions until this point, I believe that she does. We will probably look back on this time and be thankful she was careful to craft such a well-articulated and thought-out decision. We want this as ironclad as possible. And I think that makes sense as well. Now, of course, maybe I'll be eating my own words. Maybe Jeremy will too. We'll look back and be like, ah, oh, that damn Taurus. <laughs> maybe we actually get a horrendous ruling, but I'm optimistic. And it seems like Jeremy is there too. So we'll see what happens here. But just the way she's presented herself, the, the, you know, the, the stuff that she's said for the last two plus years, ever, the whole way she's approached this, it seems like it's come from an open, honest perspective, just wanting to get this damn thing right. And so I, I, I'm, I'm expecting the best here. Um, oh, I want to highlight this since, uh, you know, hey, April Fool's Day, everybody. Here's Gary Ginsler. Do you see this? If you're on Twitter, you probably saw this if you're in the XRP community. Gary Ginsler changed his, uh, his profile picture to what was already his profile picture, but with these little pixelated glasses that you've probably seen because they're in an endless number of memes all over interwebs. And uh, here an attorney, Gabriel Shapiro, wrote, Gensler with the deal with it meme on April Fool's Day. You know where the little glasses drop down on the head after doing something baller, that's the meme. You know, you guys have seen this stuff before. That's what he did. He put the deal with it meme up for everybody to see on April 1st. Oh my God, this guy's a prick. He's just unbearable. And then there was also this, speaking of that prick, uh, here's, you may have seen, this is from uh, Brad Garlinghouse a couple days ago. I wanted to share this real briefly. And then we'll get into the stuff about the center because that's really interesting. Please stick with me. You've got time because wow, that stuff, whew, it's just, it's grotesque and offensive. But check this out. So first, here's what Brad Garlinghouse said though. He wrote, uh, and he shared a, an article from The Block about, uh, about Ginsler. And uh, Brad Garlinghouse said, for the chair of the SEC to assert that he dictates what is a security and not the legislation from which his agency derives its power is beyond comprehension. It's time for elected officials in the U.S. to take notice. When you behave like an autocrat running a $2.2 billion bloated agency, why would you ever want to provide clarity about what's in or out? Without clear jurisdiction, ambiguity masquerades as power. Read that again. You know what? I will read it again. He said, without clear jurisdiction, ambiguity masquerades as power. Right. And so there's ambiguity in terms of who should be in charge of what. We need more clarity from Congress, frankly. And uh, still, as a result of that, you've got the SEC and Gary Ginsburg doing what he's doing. Since there's not clear jurisdiction, there's this ambiguity which is masquerading as power because the SEC, Gary Ginsler specifically, pretending like he's the one with the power. The SEC is the government agency with the power. And so that's why Brad Garlin has said he's behaving like an autocrat. He's just, he's the ruler. He's the one in charge of all this $2.2 billion bloated agency. Absolutely spot on. <sighs> now we get to the final part of the video here. And this is just offensive. <sighs> This is Elizabeth Warren's recent tweet here. It's from a few days ago, and 
she shared this little video. I, I, uh, I froze it right here on the part that's most relevant to us here in crypto. It says Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army. So this is part of like a, her platform campaign, if you will. That's This is the message she wants out there in the world. And she tweeted out, I'm in this fight to put our government on the side of working families. Join our re-election campaign today. So there you go. She's campaigning on an anti-crypto platform. She is awful. She's absolutely disgusting. She is not intellectually honest. She's deceitful. And she's counting on people to be stupid. That's what she's counting on. For sure, people to be stupid. And this is the senator that I was, I was uh, talking about at the outset of the video. If she's not the worst senator in the United States, she's among the worst. And she might be the worst. I don't know. I mean, it's up for debate, I suppose. But she's, she's in that realm. Let's just say that. Um, and then there was uh, a headline like this from Forbes. Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army feeding serious U.S. Bitcoin ban warnings. And if she could have her way, that's what would happen. Everything would be gone. But there's also this headline from Kitco. Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto re-election platform goes against her constituents poll show. Now, that's funny. Her constituents don't want that to be a thing, but she's pushing it anyway. Now, did she not have that information or is she just so blinded by some sort of sick ideology that she's just pushing this forward anyway? She wants you listening to this. If she had a way, you'd not have this power. You'd not have this opportunity for financial freedom because there's never been an investment vehicle on the entire planet, uh, in the entire history of our planet, uh, such as crypto. The, you know, the degree to which people, regular people, can achieve life-changing wealth and in relatively short order, and it's all on the up and up. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't scams in crypto, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, it, the asset class in and of itself, it's it's on the up and up. That's it, she she wants you to not have that power. Is that not repulsive to every single one of you listening? We're all in crypto. We're all in the XRP community, right? She doesn't want you to have that. She just wants that gone. I mean, can you, the degree to which she just incredible life changing positive technology. And even though there are, you know, any, any new technology can be used in a bad, deceitful, illegal way, including crypto, including the internet. Like that, it's obvious. Should we just not have the internet then? Just because people can do a bad thing with a new thing? No. You have rules, you have law, and you enforce those rules and those laws. And you stop the bad people. You don't stop the good stuff, you idiot stick. Get your head out of your ass. And so here is the thread from attorney John Deaton. He tweeted out, Elizabeth Warren is a fraud. She and her staff in Massachusetts and in D.C. abandoned over 300 constituents I represent in the 76,000 plus XRP holders putative class. She refused to even talk to me or any of those 300 constituents because she couldn't risk being seen as on the side of two billionaires. <laughs> Attorney <clears throat> Deaton continues, when I explained that I had over 300 of her constituents who owned XRP and that we didn't care if the SEC sued Ripple, but that the grossly overboard allegations were hurting real people who had no relation or connection to Ripple, do you know what her staff told me? Quote, look, the senator isn't looking, I'm sorry, the senator isn't going to say or do anything that might appear to be taking the side of a CEO, let alone some crypto billionaires, end quote. <laughs> it's all about the optics, and I get it, pol politics, politics, politics. But this has real-world world ramifications. You know, if, if, if you're an XRP holder, she's saying, you be damned, my optics are what is of paramount importance. Does that make you feel good, warm, fuzzy inside? That leadership? That's that's leader. Is that leadership? And then Attorney Deaton says, I responded that I didn't represent any CEOs or billionaires, but instead the hardworking people she claims to support. The bottom line is that Elizabeth Warren cares more about maintaining her class warfare than she does about truth and justice. At first, she wouldn't help, but now she is out to hurt people. Spot on, Attorney Deaton, and I'm glad that he shared that publicly. And this isn't about, uh, you know, being on the left or the right politically. I, I just, I am not taking, this is not having a political stance. I will go against anyone on the left or the right who is trying to, to destroy crypto. And this is what, she happens to be a Democrat. 
I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. Uh, I, I don't care. I don't care what the political leanings are. You know, I, this is a non-political channel. The only time I ever delve in anything remotely touching politics is if it has specifically to do with crypto. This fits the bill. That's for damn sure. And she is disgustingly awful. Ben Armstrong, a.k.a. BitBoy Crypto, tweeted this out. It's obvious when you look at Senator Elizabeth Warren's donors that she fights for the billionaires, not against them. She is an absolute fraud. Read what she said to John Deaton and then compare this list of donors and you will see something does not add up. She is a corrupt political criminal. And so again, her, her representative in her office said, hey, you know, she's not going to do anything that looks like she's supporting a you know a billionaire or a CEO. Uh, okay, well, Ben Armstrong pointed out, here's where she's getting her money. Look at the ones he circled. I know all of them except one. Uh, so here's what he circled. Th these are donors. Alphabet, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Kaiser Permanente. That's the, Permanente? That's the only one I didn't know. A big-ass company, apparently, though. Walt Disney, AT&T. Money from these mega corporations going specifically to her to fight crypto. Do you see? She's a, she's a fraud. This is complete garbage here. And John Deaton also tweeted out, I practice law in Massachusetts. Massachusetts judges have mandatory retirement at age 70. In other words, if Elizabeth Warren was a judge in Massachusetts and not a senator, she would have to retire if you're too old to rule on the application of the law, maybe you're too old to be making law. Then there was this from Stuart Alderati, who is a Ripple's general counsel. So he's there. Actually, he changed in his bio here, I think. Chief legal officer. Yeah, he changed it from general counsel to chief legal officer. I don't know if it's if there's even a difference. Whatever. But anyway, so he's their top in-house legal guy at Ripple. And Stuart Alderati said... Before other politicians joined Senator Warren's anti-crypto army, remember her 2020 campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination failed so miserably she dropped out after being declared unelectable. <laughs> Gotta love that. Oh, man. What a terrible human. Just the, the, the worst. I, I see nothing redeeming here. So that's what we're up against. Just let, just let you know. Anybody out there in Massachusetts, if you're pro-Warren, just know that she doesn't have your financial interests in mind. Just be aware of that. You do what you want. But she does not have your financial interests at heart. She doesn't give a damn. It's all about optics. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.